Okay, now that we understand the meaning of the rate constant and order, and that we need those numbers in order to be able to complete our rate law equation, we need to think about how we find both of those quantities. The way we're going to do that is something called the method of initial rate. So this is just a technique that we use to determine both the values of order and rate constant. So let me describe a little bit this idea of the method of initial rate. So the first thing is experimentally, we have to collect the data, which in this case means determining the initial rate of the reaction at different reactant concentrations. We're going to start with different values of reactant, measure the initial rate right away at the start of the reaction. So we talked about how to do that in prior lecture. And then once we have that data, we can then use that data to help us figure out the rate constant and the order of each reactant. Here I'm showing you the steps that you have to go through once you have the data. And this is the example data that we will use. Here, there's three different trials. Okay, so in trial one, we have these two numbers for the reactant. For trial two, we changed the concentration of ClO2 compared to trial one. In trial three, we noticed that we changed the concentration of the F2 compared to trial one, but then the ClO2 goes back to that same number again. Okay, so that's the key idea. You have to change the concentration of reactant from one experiment to the next. And then you measure the initial rate. So then the question becomes from there, how do we determine the order and the rate constant from this data? And in this specific question, we're also asked the following, what is the initial rate if we mix 0.3 molar of F2 and 0.02 molar of ClO2? We should be able to get the answer once we have the rate law for the reaction. Okay, let's now go and figure out how to solve this problem. So the reaction is shown right here, F2 plus 2ClO2 goes to 2FClO2, and we're given those trial values of reactant concentration and initial rates. So we're going to start by writing the general rate law of the reaction. So remember that the general rate law is just written in the form of rate equals to rate constant times the reactant one concentration raised to its order, and then reactant two concentration raised to its order. And again, at this point, we don't know what K, M, or N is. We're going to try to figure it out. The next thing you want to do is just write the equation out, substituting the values from the data into this general rate law. So we know that for trial one, rate is this number. So we're going to put that there equal to rate constant, which is K, times the concentration of F2 in the first trial is 0.1. So I'm going to put that 0.1 molar inside and then raise that to the power of M. And then for trial one, the concentration of ClO2, chlorine dioxide, is 0.01 molar raised to the power of N. Okay, And I'm going to do that with all the other two trials as well. So you should be hopefully getting these equations right here. Okay, once you have all three equations, then where you're going to get the value of the order is just divide one equation by the other one. And the way you want to do this, you want to find one where there is the same initial concentration, okay? Because when you do that, then mathematically those numbers will cancel. So for example, here I'm going to divide trial one by trial two. And when I do that, the M value will cancel, okay? And I'll show you in a sec how that works. And so that will help you to get N, which is the order with respect to chlorine dioxide, ClO2, okay? So here's the work itself, right? I take the equation representing trial one, which is the top one right here, and then I divide it by the equation representing trial two. Okay, so when I divide those two equations, this is what I get. I get on the left, just the division of the rate, right? Just this right here. You can see that certain things cancel away. Unit, first thing, the exponents go away. So it's just 1.2 divided by 4.8, which ends up being 0.25, okay, in my calculator. So that's done. On the right side now, the two rate constants are equal, right? Because we're talking about the same reaction. We're not changing temperature. We're not adding catalysts in one reaction to the other one. So the K is going to be the same, so that cancels away. Now here's another thing that's the same though. 0.1 raised to the power of M, 0.1 raised to the power of m. So those two will cancel too. And then we have this one right here that's left. These two are not the same, but remember in math, when you have something raised to the same exponent, you can write it this way. Instead of writing it as 0.01 to the n over 0.04 to the n, you can just write it as 0.01 over 0.04 to the power of n. The m will cancel away. So all you have is 0.01 over 0.04 to the power of n, which then become 0.25 
to the power of n, okay? Now, once you have this equation right here, you can see that what is the value of n that would make those two sides equal to each other? Well, n has to be equal to one, okay? So that tells you that the order with respect to ClO2 will be equal to one, okay? So this number here is one. Now we can repeat the same process to get the value of m, and I will leave it up to you to do that. Find your own two equations, divide them, do the math, and you should get m also equal to 1 in this case. Do it on your own, make sure you can do it, okay? So once you get the two orders, your equation now has values right here, right? So this number and this number now is both equal to 1. If I know the rate, then I can find the rate constant. Literally, I can choose any of these three trials, plug in the values for the rate and the orders and the concentrations, and I just need to solve for the rate constant. So I happen to choose trial one in this case. That's the equation. The order value is both one. It's anything to the power of one is just its, its own number. And so once I solve, I get k, the rate constant equals 1.2 with this unit. Okay, the unit is kind of unique. It's per molar per second. So molar is a power of negative one, seconds a power of negative one. Okay, once I have that, then now my rate law is complete. I have both the rate constant and the order. I can use that information to calculate the initial rate when we use 0.3 molar F2 and 0.02 molar ClO2. All I need to do is substitute those numbers in my rate law equation. I have the rate constant right here. I have the concentration raised to the power of one of one of the reactants and I have the other one also raised to the power of one that in the end will give me this as the initial rate for the concentration of the reactants that I was given, okay? So that's how you determine the rate constant and order using the method of initial rate. I just want to note here that the reaction order and the stoichiometric coefficients, as we said earlier, don't really have any kind of relationship. So as it happens in this case, the F2 has a coefficient of 1 and its order is 1, but for ClO2, its stoichiometric coefficient is 2 and its order is 1. So again, just to emphasize this point that the order with respect to each reactant is not the same as the stoichiometric coefficient of that reactant. In this case, the overall order of the reaction is 2 because we have 1 plus 1. Okay, so we just finished the section on how to use the method of initial rates to determine rate constant and order. And so what we want to do right now is summarize the information that we learned from solving that one problem. And we can apply it to both the zeroth order and second order reactions as well, because these three are going to be the ones that you'll see a lot of in this class. What you can do is use dimensional analysis to try to figure out what the unit of the rate constant is given a particular overall order of a reaction. And the way we can do this is just by understanding that rate is always equal to k time reactant to the power of some order. And so assuming that the overall order is represented by that exponent right there, we can really see that the unit of the rate constant is just going to be the unit of rate divided by the unit of concentration raised to some powers. We know the unit of rate is always concentration over time, so let's use molar per second just to represent that. It doesn't have to be that. It could be molar per minute, per day, per year, or some other unit of concentration, but this is going to be the most common one. And so let's say you have a zeroth order reaction. For a zeroth order reaction, the bottom part is just going to be 1 because anything raised to the power of 0 is equal to 1. So therefore, the unit of the rate constant is also going to be molar per second if you have a zeroth order reaction. If you have a first order reaction, notice that this m value here is going to be 1. So you're going to have something like molar per second divided by just molar. So therefore, your unit is going to be per second or some kind of inverse time unit. And so that tells you that you have a first order reaction. And lastly, for a second order reaction, it's going to be molar per second over molar squared. Canceling that, you're going to get per molar per second, which is written this way. So this is actually really useful because it tells you that if you're given the rate constant with a certain unit, automatically it tells you the order of the reaction.